Good morning, great day, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a great day today. Today is the 11th of January. We're moving forward. And today I want to continue our dialogue as we're talking about mastering telemarketing, a real, real vital part of your business. Whether you're talking to past clients, centers of influence, we're talking to people that we don't know, such as for sale by owners, expired listings, business owners, networking events, Whatever you're doing to build your business, even communication on social media requires us from time to time on social media, if you believe it or not, to use the telephone. You kind of got to call up people and talk to them once you get an interaction with them, and I think that's an extremely powerful source for you. So today I want to continue with some of the fundamentals as we talked about yesterday as a recap to what we mentioned, you know, telemarketing fundamentals, we come down to making sure that you're working smarter, not harder. You distinguish yourself. You make the distinction yourself by the way you sell. You make a distinction by the way you sell your products, goods, and services. You're very, very client focused. Remember, it's all about the relationship. Okay, and how you get people to feel good. And you do that by being client-focused, client-centric, consultative selling mindset, meaning that you're in a conversation with people. And I like to think people uh, in this process here of consultative selling in the mindset of a doctor. Okay, you're a doctor of selling. And at the end of the day, just like any great doctor would perform their procedures with you and their diagnosis, etc., that they're going to ask you a lot of questions and they're going to start to bond with you. That's going to cause you to build a trusting, which is the next thing is, um, is, is thinking about earning the right to move forward. You see, when you ask questions and you elicit answers from people, you are earning the right to ask more questions and continue to work through the process with this facility going on. You're going to start to build trust and you're going to start to build credibility because this is the way bonding and relationships start to create and formulate. Guys, keep in mind, people, you know, if you unless you're a straight referral and somebody says, yeah, come on over, list my house. Bill told me that you're going to be the best. I just want to sign the paperwork, get my house sold because I got to move. Other than that, you've got to really push hard to make it happen, meaning that you, and when I say push hard, that means you have to personally be prepared for that process. I don't mean push people to do something they don't want to do. I don't mean that at all. What I mean is you have to personally push hard to to really work through the process. And this part of the deal is in the mindset and the skill set revolve around your ability to earn the right to move forward and your ability to build trust and credibility. Because guys, at the end of the day, the last fundamental of the, of the many that we're going to talk about today and we're going to move forward now is people buy from people they like and trust. People buy from people they like and trust. And that's done by building great communications with people. So here's what we want to do. How do we distinguish ourselves by the way we sell? You know, guys, at the end of the day, it's guilt by association a lot of times. If you're in the real estate field, the mortgage field, a lot of times we're guilty because we're a part of a group of people that have made other people uncomfortable, unhappy, unworthy, uh, feeling unworthy about actually wanting to work with somebody in the real estate business. Why is that? Because they have done a lousy job doing what they do, and therefore we're guilty by that association in that relationship. The second thing is when we're in telemarketing, okay, and the same thing, same philosophy holds true. You know, the bad news is when it comes to telemarketing, that's people uh, align us with people that are telephone people. We even believe that ourselves. Oh, I'm just a telemarketer and I'm using the phone here to make calls and I'm just like all those other people. And so the perception in the marketplace is going to feel like I'm just a, a lowly telemarketer. Well, guys, we got to change that mindset because guys, at the end of the day, <clears throat> all of us, whether it's somebody that you're calling or somebody that's calling you have had negative experiences with overzealous salespeople. And the reason they get these experiences is simply because that overzealous salesperson really was pushing something down somebody's throat that they did not want, need, or desire. Okay. Cause they didn't really consult. They didn't, they didn't look to, to build a, a bridge between what it is that they're calling about <clears throat> and what it is that they could actually buy. So telephone salespeople in particular get a bad rap. 
at the end of the day, guys, and sometimes for good reasons. And I totally understand that because there are people that do push it and they frankly don't sound too good on the phone. You know, they just, even with great scripts, they don't follow the processes and they're not well trained. So here's what I want you to think about when you are looking to distinguish yourself by the way you sell. Write down these questions, all right? What are some of the common stereotypes about salespeople, especially telemarketers, that people uh, have in place? What are, the, what, are you, what are the common stereotypes about salespeople and especially telemarketers? When you think of people you consider professional and think about the experiences that you have had in your life, who comes to mind, all right? When you've had it, when you think of people you consider professional, who comes to mind? What are some of the characteristics of these professionals? What connected you with them? What caused you to say, yeah, well, I want to have a further conversation with this person? And guys, when you're learning this process, I like to always believe that going out, you know, I would tell you, get off the do not call list. Go out there and, and meet salespeople. Okay. Even if they're lousy and you feel that they're going to, you don't even want to do something, just go out there and talk to them. But you're going to start to, uh, to, to put together an idea of characteristics of these top professionals when you're in the marketplace. And then how can you distinguish yourself by what, the, by the way you sell? After you learn a little bit about what these professionals are currently doing, the ones that make you feel good, the ones that say, okay, I'm, I'm here to help you, and then you say, yes, I want some help from you, and you understand their characteristics, then you have to ask yourself, how can you distinguish yourself by the way you sell? What's the, what difference are you going to bring to the table? Is it energy? Is it deliverability? Is it guarantee? Is it voice? Is it compassion? What is it that you're going to bring to the table that's going to distinguish you, okay, from everybody else? And I believe all of those things and probably a few more are going to be a part of the process for you. So now once you've gone through those questions, we want to go and now think about the next phase, okay? We talked about that distinguishing factor about you. Then the next thing is client-focused attitude, a client-focused attitude. The first thing we got to do, guys, is discard the idea that you're selling the prospect, okay? When you're calling, you got to discard the idea that you're calling to sell the prospect. You're not selling them. Calling to sell a prospect conjures up images of trying to persuade somebody to buy something that they really don't want or need, okay? Instead, adopt the idea that you're calling to help the person and help the prospect find solutions to a problem, okay? There's a big difference there. See, people say, well, get the appointment and you're selling. Well, guys, at the end of the day, you're selling yourself, Okay, and how you sell yourself is by instead of instead of thinking like I'm going to try to persuade somebody to push an appointment, I'm going to first understand their problem and help them find a solution. Next thing to maintaining a client focused attitude is remember the importance of establishing rapport and building trust. You know, start with having the right attitude that you are here to help the prospect. Today, buyers guys are more astute than ever before. With, with access to technology. And they usually know, frankly, even before the first sale is made, what kind of salesperson that you are. They, they typically, they have it already, already down. You know, we used to say back in the day, you know, we, we'd call up sellers or talk to buyers, whatever the case is, and they would give us these responses. And, every, and across the board, everybody would give you the five or six typical objections, whatever they might be. I want to think about it. I got a friend in the business. I don't want to pay commissions, etc. And everybody had the same responses. So we used to say these guys would go to seller and buyer school together and they would role play when somebody calls them what they're going to say when they call them. Interesting, isn't it? So here's the deal, guys. Because people are more astute than ever before, if you're the kind of person who's focused on getting the sale no matter what, getting the appointment no matter what, because you might be feeling desperate or you need something, the buyer on the other side of the phone can usually sense it. Okay. On the other hand, if you're someone who's client-oriented, the buyer will sense that as well. Keep that in mind. The next thing, as I said a few minutes ago, become a doctor of selling. You know, guys, as you, you know, whenever you go to doctor, he or she will follow three-part sequence of their process. Okay, very typically it's an examination, it's a diagnosis, and then they offer a prescription. In the examination phase, you ask questions carefully prepared in a particular sequence and order, which are geared to give you more thorough understanding of the prospect's 
uh, situation, okay? In the diagnosis phase, you repeat back the results of your examination and double check to be sure that the diagnosis seems to be accurate description of the condition or the problem, okay? In the prescription part, the pres prescription phase, you show the prospect that your, that your product, your service, is the best treatment for the alignment and diagnosed out outcome and describe how that product will take them away from the pain and solve their condition or problem. Does that make sense, guys? So keep yourself in the mindset, I'm a doctor of selling. The next thing, maintaining client-focused attitude, okay, is think win-win. Remember, if you help enough people get what they want and need, you will also get what you want and need. Famously said by the great late Zig Ziglar, okay? Help enough other people get what they want, and you'll also get what you want as well. Think win-win. How can we win together here on this conversation? What can make that happen? Telemarketing, if you're thinking like this, guys, you know, I, I believe that 80% of telemarketing is a mindset. The other part of it, if not more, if not less, is a skill set. Okay, 80 to 90% is a mindset. And if you walk in with a think win-win mindset, hey, you're going to get a lot of opportunities. The next thing when, with maintaining client-focused attitude is gaining agreement rather than closing the sale. Okay? you got to close for the appointment, right? But here's the deal. Gain agreement rather than thinking closing the sale. Closing is something that you do to somebody. Closing is something that you do to somebody. Gaining agreement is something you do with somebody and suggest mutually uh, a mutual collaboration of understanding. Yeah, I need uh, I, I need help. And you said you asked some questions and they said, yeah, you know, based on what you said, I think I can I think you can help me solve my problem. I just want to meet with you. So get an idea what that's going to be like. Great. When can we meet so I can show you what I can do to help you solve your problem? Guys, that's really all it is. If you gain agreement between you and the other person, you're going to move forward in your conversation. And then the last thing in maintaining a client-focused attitude, guys, is put yourself in the client's shoes. Okay, Put yourself in their experiences. Wouldn't you rather have a salesperson who generally wants a to help you find a solution than a salesperson just going to blast a bunch of canned sales pitches at you? Okay, Wouldn't you rather deal with a person who explores solutions? with you instead of one who tries to close the sale prematurely, ask for an appointment prematurely, or meet your objections with an, with an argumentative response. Well, you shouldn't do that on your own. I can do it for you better. Well, don't worry about the commission. We'll get you the results that you want. All right. So guys, here at the end of the day, put yourself in the client's shoes. What are they thinking when you call? When you're phoning people, when you're knocking on a door, you're meeting somebody for the first time, you got a referral, whatever the case is. Because as I said yesterday, everything goes together, all right? Whatever whatever uh, marketing method you're using. But we're focused here on using the phone because it's a huge and important part of our business. So put yourself in the shoes of the other people. Walk in their shoes. What are they experiencing? What are they feeling? If you're calling an expired listing, what are they? What have, what have they gone through? Guys, you know, I mentioned it in one of my recordings. They feel embarrassed. They feel uh, insulted. Um, you know, they had their house on the market. They told all their friends they're moving and they're excited. They got somebody signing the ground. Everybody's driving by and going, hey, Bill, what's happening? How's the sale going? Oh, nothing. And they feel rotten. They feel terrible because somebody else gave them a lousy uh, offer and they, they, they're creating a lousy experience for them. So put yourself in those shoes. It allows you to better understand to and be compassionate about what it is that they want to be, do, and have. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Go make it happen. Let me just repeat the list here. Maintaining client-focused attitude. Discard the idea that you're calling to sell a prospect. Remember the importance of establishing rapport and building trust. Become a doctor of selling. Ask great questions. Think win-win, gain agreement rather than close the sale, and put yourself in the client's shoes. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to me, Mike at MikeCustin.com, here to help you in any way, shape, or form. And I'm looking forward to talking to you. Listen, guys, if you want me to sit down with you for 45 minutes, anybody who's not part of my window and anybody not in my coaching uh, circle, Please feel free to reach out for you with me, and we can sit down, and I'll show you in 45 minutes how I can add fifty to $150,000 to your business without ever spending a red dime or red cent on sales or marketing concepts or ideas. 
It's very simple, and we'll go through a series of things that will help you to understand better how to build your business. All right, give me a call. Let's talk. Email Mike and Mike Husson, and we'll talk to you later. Again, realprofitbuilders.com. Forgot to make sure I mentioned that. Go back and listen to this and all other recordings over and over and over again. Make sure you follow us. Make sure you pay it forward. Talk to you soon.